All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, and what we're here today, we're learning how to use spray can paint the proper way. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Alright, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School. And what we're doing today, we're learning how to use spray can paint. If you're asking yourself, what the fuck? I know how to spray something with spray can paint. Do you really know how to use the spray can properly? This is the lesson that's going to show you how to do it right so it looks perfect the first time. So what I have here, I have a piece of scrap metal that we're going to be playing with. And this is 20 gauge steel. It's a brand new piece of steel, but uh, it really doesn't matter if it's brand new or used because the same procedure that I show you pretty much applies to anything that you spray paint, except for some plastics. And that's where this comes in instead of some other stuff that you might use. But now I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's just, you know, take it one step at a time. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your surface that you're painting is prepped up properly so the spray paint itself won't peel off later. Now in this case what we're going to do, we're going to use a red scotch bright because this is metal. If this was plastic, we would do other means to go other directions, but since we're not at that situation, we're going to go ahead and do it just like where we're going to paint anything that's metal. I'm going to go ahead and take a red scotch bright. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough my surface up, and it doesn't take a lot. All we're doing is making sure that the surface is roughed up enough for the paint to stick. Now, you might have something that's painted already, and you want to freshen it up. Uh, using a Scotch-Brite is a good tool. Uh, this is a red Scotch-Brite. They also come in gray. This is the coarse one. The gray one would be the uh, light one, or the you might call it. Uh, the fine one, the fine course. So once your surface is prepped up, you can see now uh, by the sheen of it that it has now been prepped up. This is where this comes in. Now what is this? What is this stuff and why are we even using it? What this stuff is, is rubbing alcohol. Now I've heard, okay, and I'm saying the word heard because I've never done it. You can use mineral spirits as well. Uh, mineral spirits does the same thing but I know that rubbing alcohol is a lot cheaper and less expensive, so I like to stick with that. And it also dries quicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol with a uh, lint-free rag. That's another important step to make sure that you're gonna clean your surface that you're gonna paint. Make sure that you use something that's lint-free and tack-free. We don't want any lint or static electricity being caused that's gonna uh, attract any type of dust or dirt. And if you notice, what the alcohol is doing is cleaning our surface off and it's drying very quickly. And that's what you want. You want it to clean and dry as fast as possible. Uh, I don't know if mineral spirits dries this fast. I think it's more of a uh, solvent type cleaner or a solvent additive than it is a uh, you know evaporative type uh, cleaner. So I've always stuck with this, and of course this goes a very long way, and this only costs about 69 cents for that one little bottle. So once our surface is clean, we want to go ahead and let that dry, and you can see all the dirt and all the smudge that I got off that. And if you were going to paint a surface that was already painted, you would see uh, instantly that it cleans very, very well. So rubbing alcohol is a good... Uh, uh, cleaner to use on all surfaces including plastic. It will not eat the plastic and uh, it works very well with wood. It uh, cleans the pores out of the wood and it's just a very very good overall cleaner for anything that you're going to paint with uh, your spray paint. Spray can paint I might say.
So once our surface is clean and our surface has been prepped, ready to paint, it's time to go ahead and start painting with our spray can paint. Now, of course, the first thing you want to do is if you listen very closely, you can hear that there's a little metal ball inside the can. It's very important that that is mixed up thoroughly. Uh, make sure that you shake it in and out, all around, this way, that way, every way that you can for a very long period of time because what that does, that takes the solids and the liquids and mix them up where the paint will go on evenly. This is a very important step. Do not fuck this step up and do not pass this step up because if you do, it will look like shit. Thank you. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this panel over and I'm going to show you what happens to it when you don't clean the surface and when you don't prep it. If you look right here, you can see that this is pretty dirty and it really hasn't been cleaned. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to take a dry piece of this rag and if you just wipe that off uh, without prepping it at all, okay, you can see this is dry. Uh, this is a dry part of the rag here. And we're not going to use a prep or anything. And before we go any further, I do want to tell you that this is enamel. This is lacquer. There's a difference. All right? The lacquer is going to dry quicker for you, and it's actually going to be harder to paint because it does dry quicker. The enamel is going to dry slower, and it's going to give you a harder finish. All right? So this is a lacquer primer that we're going to go ahead and test with. And I'm not going to shake that up because I want to show you, if you don't shake up your can of spray paint, what it does. So if you look right here, I'm just going to go ahead and zap across there. And this is what it looks like when you don't shake your can of paint up. Do you see that? Nothing. But when you do shake your can of paint up, and you can listen very closely, there it is, okay, it's going to go ahead and do exactly what I was telling you it's going to do. It's going to go ahead and mix your paints and your solids and your liquids together. And just because it's uh, spray paint, doesn't mean that it's not toxic. Make sure that you use your spray paint in a well-ventilated area, and I'm not talking outside. Painting anything with a spray can outside is basically bullshit because doing it outside is worse than doing it inside where there's no ventilation due to the fact that there's too much, too much wind blowing and too much debris in the air to make the finish that you're trying to get fucked up. It's just gonna fuck it up. So try not to spray anything outside do it in a nice clean environment where there's a lot of ventilation, uh, where you, the viewer, won't fuck off and get sick. Plain and simple. So once the primer has been shaken up thoroughly, all right, this is lacquer one more time. I want to let you know that we're working with lacquer here. We're going to go ahead and spray it now. Uh, once again, this surface has just been cleaned. It hasn't been, uh, you know, scuffed down with our Scotch Bright, and it hasn't been, no prepping has been done to it. And we're going to go ahead and take our primer, and now you can see that the primer comes out. So the way that you want to use the primer, you want to make sure that you've got a nice, even coat. And if you notice, I'm using the trigger, I'm pushing it, but I stop when I get to the end. And I'm holding it approximately 12 to 16 inches away because I want the lacquer primer to blend together. If you notice right in this area here, uh, I'm going to bring it up closer, you can start to see runs in it. That's because I was too close and I was going too slow. So you got to find that medium, that space where you can spray where you won't get any runs because the temperature outside and the, uh, the time of the season has a lot to do with spray painting itself. So we're going to bring it back a little more and I see that now I'm getting a nice even coat. And I'm overlapping my uh, spray pattern, I'm overlapping it, but I'm not really concentrating on a full coverage. And if you look real close, you can see there's lines in it, and it looks a little bit blotchy because I'm really not concerned with uh, covering it on the first coat. This is basically our tap coat. And just to let everybody out there know, uh, I just turned my well-ventilated exhaust fan on because I don't want the fumes to get to me. So always remember well ventilation when you're doing this. That's the most important part of spray painting. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over because now we're actually ready. That's our lacquer side. That's the side that 
isn't finished. All we did is wipe the dirt off. But now I want to go ahead and flip it over. And this is the side that we uh, prepped up. We went ahead and cleaned it up. And that's where our enamel paint comes in. So we went ahead and shook our paint up. And another thing is, is I want you to see the difference in the tips here. All right, if you look at the blue one, uh, the blue tip, you can see that it's a more precise made tip and it's more high quality versus just the red spray can tip that we got here. This tip right here is going to give us a better fan, uh, a better uh, uh, automization, a better fan such as wide instead of skinny. This setting right here on this can is just going to be a straight shot out and it's not going to give us any type of pattern at all. So we're going to take our black enamel spray paint and the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and clear our gun out. I'm sorry, I called it a spray gun. We're going to clear our uh, nozzle out. We're going to get the black paint started. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and just lightly, and you can see how far I have the back, and I'm just lightly giving it uh, a black coat, making sure that it's covered everywhere. And I'm also, another thing I'm doing is I'm also chasing the dry. If you notice up in this area, it's dry, and I'm chasing that out as I spray. Uh, I'm pointing my gun, uh, my nozzle tip into the direction of going up, so it's chasing that dryness out. And also at the same time, when I spray, I'm stopping at each end, okay? So I'm spraying and I'm stopping there and I'm spraying and I'm stopping there. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like a robot arm. You might start here and then stop there. Start here, stop there, back and forth. And I have my, uh, I have my spray can at a slight angle where I'm chasing the dryness out of the paint. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.